All right, so we have an ideal air standard diesel cycle. Um, we're given the cutoff ratio and the compression ratio. We're given the conditions at the beginning of the isentropic compression process. Um, and we want to find T3, the thermal efficiency, and the mean effective pressure. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my governing equation for the thermal efficiency. Um, I've done that several times before, so there it is. If you need a refresher, once again, go back and look at that uh, diesel video. Um, the mean effective pressure. Um, it's big W net out over the um, uh, V max minus V min, but I could put that in terms of little w's and specific volumes. And of course, for any cycle, you could say that work net output is equal to Q net input. And so I could put the, therm the um, mean effective pressure in terms of just Q ins and Q outs as well. All right, um, so I'm going to kind of work my way around. I'll get the, the uh, T3 as I go uh, solve each one of my states. Um, so at state one, I need to calculate what my specific volume is. Once again, like normal, going to go ahead and apply my ideal gas law and get a number there. Um, my internal energy could be read or right off, read right off the table at 300 at 300 Kelvin, which is 27 degrees Celsius. And then I go to state two. I know I have an isentropic process from state one to state two, so I apply an isentropic relationship, and I'm going to use the one that deals with the uh, specific volume ratio, since I do know the, the ratio between of specific volumes between one and two. This is just one over the compression ratio, which is one over 16. Um, and then the relative specific volume at state one, I could pull off the ideal air tables at 300 Kelvin and solve for VR2. And once I have VR2, I look up at my ideal air or at my um, thermal efficiency and mean effective pressure equation, and I see I need to get the H value, so I interpolate for H2. Now I'm going on to state three. I don't have an isentropic process between two and three. I can apply my ideal gas law, that's always valid. Um, and my gas constants cancel out, my pressures cancel out because it's a constant pressure process from state two to state three. And then I solve directly for state uh, for T3. I do need T2, and that's going to need me. That's going to require me to go all the way back over there to uh, to to state two, um, and interpolate in my ideal air tables at that VR2 value, which I determined uh, using my isentropic relationship uh, just a second ago. So I've got a temperature of 862.311, and if I plug that in my T3 equation up here on the top right, I get 1725 Kelvin. And I'll need to go ahead and pull off my H value to be able to plug into my thermal efficiency equation and my mean effective pressure. So I've got part A, that's my T3 at 1725. So check, I've done that. Um, and now I need to go on to state four. So between three and four, I've got an isentropic process, reply, uh, apply an isentropic relationship for an ideal gas. I know that V4 and V1 are equal to one another. And now I'm going to use that manipulation that we often use with diesel cycles, and we put this V1 over V3 in terms of V1 over V2 and V2 over V3, because that is the compression ratio times 1 over the cutoff ratio, and both of those things I happen to be given in this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off VR3 in my ideal air tables. Um, and I've got 4.545, and when I plug that into my isentropic relationship at state 4, I get a VR4 of 36.36. And now I can get the very last property that I need, and that is U4. So once again, that requires me to go into my ideal air tables and interpolate at 36.36 for my VR4 value. Um, and once I plug those things in, then I get a number for the thermal efficiency and the mean effective pressure. All right, hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.